and probably the final and most important, important thing <laughs> would be don't watch youtube videos with the comments turned off <laughs> for a, a tutorial, tutorial on how yeah. to use this thing All right, hi everyone, and welcome back to The Life in Pines. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> yes, we are surrounded by the pines today. And we are back after a much needed little break. And we hope that everyone had a wonderful Christmas and New, and New Year's. Year's. I know we did. We have spent the last year and a half just working so hard to get the project house done and you know, keeping up with YouTube and it has been a crazy busy year, year and a half. Yeah. So we hope you all had a fun time. I know we did. What did we do over the Christmas vacation? We got to do a bunch of stuff. We spent a lot of time with family. We got to do some of our favorite activities that we did limited stuff in the last year and a half, like mm -hmm. ice fishing, just spending time out, walking around on the ice. We got to experience something that I don't know if we'll ever get to experience again. Yeah. I really feel like it was a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, we got to see <clears throat> hibernating snapping turtles. Like Through the ice. Hundreds of them. Oh, Holy oh, my oh my goodness. Oh. So <laughs> no, look at this one. What is this one over here? Oh, wow. Oh my it's so hard to it's get like it. It's like an aquarium oh, you can stand on. It was such a cool experience. That was on Christmas Eve. It was pouring down rain, but Teddy and the kids and I and all the dogs went out walking on the ice in the rain and we just got to walk along the whole shoreline and see all these hibernating snapping turtles. And it was seriously one of the coolest experiences. So a lot of people have been asking, you know, what's next? It's definitely what? a common question. What's next? What are you guys doing next? And if you've been following along since the beginning, mm -hmm. in 2022, we got approved for a conditional use permit on our property. For a campground. Yeah, campground, but it's actually just our way of getting approved to build an off-grid tree house. Mm -hmm. And we're also gonna do two platforms that would house two wall tents as just like an extra little getaway. Yeah, so when we got the conditional use permit, it was for a campground, but they, what they approved us for was two tent sites, which is what the platforms, the wall tents are, and one cabin, which is what the off-grid tree house is gonna be. Yeah, and there's a lot of red tape that we've gone through and hoops that we've jumped through, but we're still blazing a trail with all of what we're doing with this off-grid tree house to be able to make it rentable. Right, so the county that we live in has never worked with builders for an off-grid, especially like for a short-term rental. So with all of those considerations, being that it's off-grid and being that it's a short-term rental, that's something that they've never dealt with before. And obviously this is a first time for us too. And as we know with, the, with our rental house, that's just like a residential short-term rental, there's so many extra rules and regulations that you have to abide by. And so just navigating through that with the county has been a challenge and something that we've been researching and going through with them. More paperwork. <laughs> it's been a long, pro tumultuous. Tumult, yeah. Project, tears, process. lots lots of tears have been shed over the whole thing. But we're at a point now where we want to start the treehouse. We're ready. We're ready for it. But we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did the project house. The project house was probably one of the most stressful, anxiety-like filled times of our lives because we hate debt. So we want to do this project completely debt-free. In order to do that, we just need to take our time. There's a lot of research and a lot of groundwork that needs to be done first, which 
actually works out in our benefit because a lot of those things that we need to do to start this, to get this ball rolling, a lot of it is free. Which brings us to today. Yeah. So we to have- To the life in pines. To the life in pines. <laughs> As you can see, we're sitting on one right now. We were able to practice and try to make some beams. And the next things that we need to start working on is we're working with the county. We're gonna be working on clearing some land and just prepping the sites of where we wanna put these platforms, where we wanna put the treehouse. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna take us time to research, to learn how this is all gonna look. The, the actual treehouse is gonna be such a big investment. We really wanna take the time to make sure we're doing this right. So we so don't wanna just and... go at this willy nilly, like it takes a lot of time and preparation. And so that's that's what we're doing is- The start, the start of it just the start of it but in today's video basically what we did is we took a high high risk dangerous <laughs> tree from our front yard and that is actually what we're sitting on what we're sitting on right now and we took that down and to use it as our practice beam it's a little janky it's a little <laughs> it's like a menards beam but it's what we're used to we're used to nothing square nothing's level nothing's straight so yeah let's continue on right all the work for today's video has been done but we're going to take you in reverse and kind of fill you in on what we're doing today sorry it's been kind of a long intro but i feel like we haven't seen you guys in for so long and we had a lot of explaining to do and catching up but anyway uh we are excited to be back in the pines yeah. and we can't wait to get on this journey with you guys yeah we appreciate you seriously do mm -hmm. thanks for following along Our chainsaws are sharp and so are we, <laughs> right? Sharp as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> the shenanigans never stop, do they? Why would they? <laughs> Father God, we come to you this morning. We again just thank you for this day, the rest of our day. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Everybody's hands, eyes, fingers. Are you nervous? Toes. Like I'm starting to like, I can feel it in my chest. I'm getting yeah. nervous. You're nervous? A little bit. Here we go. I don't think that he's nervous. Okay, so we got kind of a pulley cable system set up. I borrowed this from my Uncle Nick. So what I did is I pulled tension from the tree we're going to cut down to this tree, triangled it back down to the sandbar down there. As I was winching it, I saw it leaning. It was coming this way. So that's the game plan, is just to keep tension on it this way instead of towards the house. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so I am not a professional at cutting trees down. I have cut trees down in the past, but for some reason, this one is just a little eerie. The top is super wobbly from being dead. And I don't know, it's just, it's really, it's really up there. Those <laughs> are inside kids? Yeah. Cats? That was loud. Okay, so the tree is down. It did minor damage. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's not going to be big enough to get two beams out of. Yeah. Definitely big enough to do one, but the good news is, is look at all the other ones <laughs> we have to choose from. We can pick and choose like a really easy one to cut down to. We're not trying to like maneuver in between a bunch of like things like, you know, the house and stuff. Septic tank. Septic tank and our trees that we planted painstakingly. <laughs> Yeah, we'll cut it at 25 and just see what it looks like on this end. Yeah. So. So it's pretty much eight by eight on the end, which is not as big as I thought it was gonna be at this point. So, We'll probably still use it for like the yoke maybe. I think I'm gonna make a yoke out of it. I still need to do some planning on that. Um, and maybe we can just make a bunch of like six by six or six by eights out of this. Oh, is it snowing? No, it's definitely raining, honey. Ugh. Log Hootis, <laughs> also known as a broken sled. Back her up. Taking my log for a walk. <laughs> Learning how to be on a leash. <laughs> oh. We got ourselves some logs. Okay, so we spent all of last night cutting some random trees down. Uh, most of it ended up being firewood, but we did get two kind of test beams here. The reason I say test beams is because, big surprise, this is something that we've never done before. Um, I actually purchased something for my chainsaw about a year ago off of Amazon, a super cheap chainsaw mill. I've watched videos on it and it does work, but I've never done it myself. So we're just gonna kind of practice with these two logs and see what we can do. All right, so we're back. A little bit of a different scene out here today. Yeah, like literally overnight, we finally got winter. Finally. Yeah. So we are back in the field and we took a couple days ago and we practice with one of the beams. The test beam. The test beam. And I am so glad we did. Yeah. Because there was a lot we learned. Yes, we learned a lot. Uh, the famous words is you don't know what you don't know. In the words of Jim and Lydia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few major takeaways and we're gonna go through those right now. Yeah. So first of all. Secure the log. Don't let it rock back and forth. It wanted to kind of rock a little bit, so. Another thing was get as long two by fours or two by sixes as you possibly can. We were using eight footers because that's just what we had. Mm -hmm. I went to the store, they don't have 
24 foot long. So we bought two 16 footers. It just makes it easier to keep that straight line versus going up over different planes, I yeah. guess. Another thing was they make a specific ripping chain. Skip tooth chain. Skip tooth chain for doing this. I went to a local hardware store. They didn't have one, uh, but I bought a brand new blade. We're just gonna make do with that. Yeah. And probably the final and most important, important one thing <laughs> would be don't watch YouTube videos with the comments turned off <laughs> for a tutorial cool, on yeah. how to use this thing. We've never done this before and we were on the struggle, struggle bus, bus. Yeah. so bad. Yeah. So main takeaway, if you could learn anything from us is don't put the chainsaw mill on backwards. <laughs> It's still so embarrassing but. that we did that. We cut this whole first beam with a stupid mill on backwards. backwards. But it worked. But you know what? There was never a question whether or not we were going to share that with you guys. It was like, you know what? We don't know. Yeah. He even watched a video on it. And of course it had to be the one where the guy had the stupid mill <laughs> on backwards too. And you know, whatever. It is what it is. We learned a lot on this first one. And yeah. now we're back to cut this second one. Hopefully using all the lessons that we learned. Yeah. And... Cool. I think it's going to be a good day. Yeah. And we've got snow. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're doing today. That's what we're doing today. Where's that going? Nowhere. <laughs> Okay, so we got the guide board, I guess you'd call it, screwed in. Uh, we used some shims to make sure that this two by four stayed level up on the top. Uh, so that's kind of one of the tedious parts. So now we get to the fun part and we get to start milling. That took a long time to get that. Yeah, that was pretty tedious, but. <laughs> Each one will get faster though. Yeah. Don't get scared now. <laughs> it's, a, it's not easier because we've got it on the right way. It's, but it's, you can tell the lines are a lot straighter for sure. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we can keep it on that two by four a lot easier. My chain's getting hot. We gave it a little break, tighten it up. Okay, so that first side is done and I think it turned out really nice. With the practice beam, we actually figured out it's nice to have Jenna just with a stick, just holding kind of pressure. It just saves my back and saves like the forearms from having to pull that chainsaw. I'm just not as strong as some of those big lumberjacks, I guess. <laughs> but it looks good. Now we're just gonna basically do the exact same thing on the other side, but we gotta move these guards towards that other beam and cut the other side. Okay, so now that we've got this side figured out exactly where we want the cut to start, we're gonna take this cut side, measure from the cut to where the two by four is and make sure that that distance is the same all the way down so that our beam stays the same width consistently all the way down the, all the, way down the beam, yeah. all the way down the log. Cause this side is way skinnier than the other side. Right, so that's how trees work. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Fact, I thought do. they were just the same size all the way up.
Okay, so we had we had a lot of plans. We, we we're all over the place, but what we've decided is we're gonna flatten this top. This is how that beam is gonna sit. I wanted to leave the live edge, you know, kind of clean the bark off with a draw knife, but it it would it wouldn't be a flat surface for our deck to go on. So we're just gonna turn this over, cut a small as small as we can off the top to flatten it out for to receive the next boards that are going to go on top of it once this beam is up we're going to need another one of these too so we'll have to cut another tree down or try to find one very similar size so we can do this exact same thing for the other beam so Okay, there we have it. Um, yeah, we had high hopes for this beam that it was gonna be big enough for the treehouse, but it's it's just not. But we have a place to use it. Mm -hmm. So this is actually gonna be the first beam of the squatters garden platform overlook tent house. <laughs> We're gonna think of a name for it. Name Maybe you guys it. can help us think of a name for it. Yeah, so this will be a very good way for us to practice mm -hmm. uh, this one doesn't need to be as load bearing as the treehouse would be but we're going to use the same applications yes. same type build and then go from there go from there yeah i guess it, it just it feels good to be building and doing something we've never done before and you know as you guys saw like i was even able to use the chainsaw mill i mean it was hard work and i don't know if i would have been able to do it without ted helping push on it yeah we, we are definitely using an undersized chainsaw, but yeah. again, it, we it's are- It's an 18 inch bar on yeah, it. 450, like, 455, or it, it's pretty small, yeah. but again, it's, it's, it's what, what we, we have. Had. And you know- We're making, making it, work. it work. Yeah, <laughs> slow but steady. Yeah. You know, that wins the race, right? On to the next one? On to the next one. Oh Today? There, it's just not. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> life that, in the pines. We live in the pines. No, not life in the pines. St the life in pines. Uh, Get it together. It's been too long since I've been in front of a camera. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> Okay, as you can see, the lens is all dirty. Oh, gloves. Thought you had a plan. Thought you had a plan. Why don't you just do the screwing? Well, you, I just thought you would be the... <laughs> <laughs> Who put that stick there? It's a winter wonderland out here. Here in Minnesota. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a winter wonderland out there. Here we're... in Minnesota. Yes, that's, what, that's right. So we are doing this video. I just, see, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't. Like, 